Dr. Ron Paul, hailing from Texas. I'm so honored to be a Texan with him. Uh, Congressman, how many sponsors does it really have? Well, it's actually 209 right now. Yeah, you heard it here first, 209. So, so you have to almost check minute by minute, and they're coming in faster and easier now. And uh, uh, the percentage of the new uh, people are Democrats because a lot of the Republicans are already on. So it is spreading. I think the people at the grassroots have done the job that they need to do. And when we feel really de depressed about how slow Congress works, we do have a system that will respond if we wake up enough people. But that's the tough job. But it, it, they will respond when they hear from the people. Congressman, how long have you worked to get this many sponsors? I mean, you've been introducing this bill for a decade, haven't you? Yes, it's been probably ever since I've been in Congress. I don't know if I've ever skipped any, but there's never been any uh, uh, general support from the public. But because of the financial crisis and because of the presidential campaign and the interest in the Federal Reserve, all of a sudden it's come together. Uh, so this is by far the uh, most interest uh, that we've had. And, and quite frankly, I think it's the most interest anybody's ever had since the Federal Reserve has been established in 1913. Because, you know, even though the Fed contributed significantly if they didn't cause the whole depression of the 20, of the 30s nobody was calling for you know auditing the fed and abolishing the fed today those are routine chants that we hear and uh, therefore i think we're making great progress only because they've uh, created such a chaotic mess that we're dealing with well we'll have to change the headline at infowars.com and prisonplanet.com to 209 from congressman ron paul so you heard it here first sir I don't want listeners to blink or, or viewers to blink because they may miss history. I don't think even our own movement realizes the gravity of the fact that it looks like this bill has a good chance of passing if you get another 10 or so sponsors. And the Federal Reserve has hired lobbyists to try to block this. Their arrogance, their veneer of invincibility, their cloak of invincibility is falling away. People see that they can be beat. They see that they are not above the law. It's viral videos with the former Fed chairman and current Fed chairman saying they're above the law and no one can look into them and no agency of government of the three branches can. That is asinine on its face for even an uneducated, uninformed public on our system of government. And so I just want to get your take on uh, what is it like for you to know you're the leader of something that is so amazingly historical, because even if they somehow beat this this time, then the question is, how were we not able to audit you? And so you can see that the momentum has changed and the pendulum is really shifting. I sense destiny of the level of 1776 here, sir. Yeah, I think there's no doubt about it. They can't put the genie back in the bottle because uh, the, the odds are still, you know, iffy about uh, where this is going to go. I mean, there's the powers to be have a lot of uh, a lot of tools that they can use. Conference committees, maybe they might block it in the Senate. Uh, they, they can do all sorts of things. Uh, so I remain cautiously optimistic because I know it has a long way to go. But the issue will not be quieted down. I mean, the issue is out there. And, uh, if you know, in, in some ways, let's say we have all this attention in this bill and we get the majority in the Congress to endorse it and it never gets out and never goes anyway. It's proof positive that we really need to do it. That, that means the incentive will be that much greater to get a handle on all this. So I think we win either way because we've gotten the attention of such a large number of people. And it's not uh, only the very, very hardcore constitutionalists because the grassroots are talking to the very average Republican, the very average Democrat, the moderate, the liberal, the progressive, and they're all joining it. But the issue really here is reigning in government and transparency. Uh, we should not be fooled into believing that they have a strong belief in the monetary policies that we might want. I mean, they're not old gold standard people or anything else. What's driving this is that uh, Congress has created a mess. The Federal Reserve has been doing a lot secretly, and the American people want to know what's happening because they've seen too many special interests bailed out, not only by Congress and the Treasury, but by the Federal Reserve as well, and they're demanding answers. Congressman, uh, in the 12 minutes or so we have left with you, I've got so many important questions concerning this. How do we explain to some of the public out there that this is all a process of liberty? Tyranny wasn't born overnight in this country, 
and liberty isn't going to take back over overnight. And it's a constant battle between those two tidal forces, as you know. But you know, people said, oh, Ron Paul didn't win, so boo-hoo. I said, no, it built this giant movement. Now the biggest thing on campus isn't liberal or fake conservative. It's libertarian. It's freedom. It's constitutionalist. And now people are finally seeing that a year later, that it's building in strength uh, and that it's a process that even, as you just said, even if they defeat it this time, then people say, well, why can't we audit it? It's almost better if they do uh, engage in chicanery and pull out the stops and beat it this time, because then everybody's going to want to know what they're hiding. Yep, that's exactly right, and uh, that'll just energize our our group uh, of young people, especially even even more so. But uh, I think it's an issue whose time has come, and uh, it's not going to go away. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you saw Jim Grant's quote today on on the business station, but uh, he said that if we ever got that auditing bill passed, that uh, it would be uh, a declaration that the uh, Federal Reserve is in a lot worse shape than any of the banks that went bankrupt. But the, the technically, you know, in, in conventional terms. The Federal Reserve does not have the assets. All they have are credits, and and obviously that's what we would expect. But uh, that would, that goes to prove why uh, they can't be the salvation of this country. I mean, just counterfeiting money and doing mischief and serving the interests uh, of their friends, that, that can't work. I think it's going to come to an end whether we win this legislative victory or not because their system is deeply flawed. Ultimately, I think the solution comes... Uh, if we're well prepared to offer it up uh, when the system totally collapses, the, the financial structure has come unglued, but the uh, the dollar still this, the dollar still works to a degree. You know, people still are buying dollars and they don't know what to do with them. But when they get discouraged and they don't hold dollars anymore, and then they start buying up hard assets, they're starting to buy oil now more than they did a month or so ago, and they continue to buy gold. And, and you know, China continues to buy gold. I mean, there's a lot of things, but the end stages of a situation like this goes very, very rapidly once the sentiment changes. Just like when the financial system collapsed, uh, everybody rushed to dollars and interest rates went down to 1%, along with what the Fed was doing. But uh, uh, when a currency crisis hit, people went, holy man, let's get out of the dollar, and then you'll see the fireworks. Then we have to be prepared to say, don't just give us a U.N. central bank. I mean, the, the international planners are, they know what we know, and they're, they're making their plans. They know their days are numbered. But the contest is between uh, totalitarianism and liberty, and, and uh, whoever uh, wants the totalitarian approach has to have uh, government-monopolized money, and that's what we have to stop. In your gut, and we all know what the gut is, it's thousands of pieces of data integrated in, and the mind comes up with a prime projection. In your gut, Congressman, do you agree with me that in the last two months we were about to get the title shift or the flip to our side, but I can almost spiritually feel it at a DNA level that the shift has happened? Toward our way? Yes. Well, when I'm out of Washington, I have two perspectives. You know, uh, when uh, I go to a college campus and you you represent and talk to people outside of Washington, and there should be reason why you're seeing signs of optimism. But I come up here every single day. Right now we're dealing with the State Department uh, authorization bill, and it's atrocious. You know, it's $18 billion and more mischief and more militarism and uh the Republicans this time are going to oppose it, but it's just a partisan thing. But it'll go sailing right through. So you're saying there's two different worlds, yeah. and, and, and more and more it's getting separated, and that gulf is widening. Right, and like like this week, and I just got off the floor. I gave my all of two minutes, and I said, you know, our president has asked us to uh, go with PAYGO, pay the bills as you go along. Of course, for the liberal, that means raise taxes. Well, how can they raise taxes? That There's no, no businesses out there. Uh, that, that can pay. But they're not going to pay for this. They're incapable. And if they paid for it by cutting it and they want to spend all this uh, money overseas, they'd have to cut a domestic program, which they're not going to do. So the president's out, out, outside on the TV, and people say, well, that does sound good. And this president's not a radical spender. He he wants to cut down, and he wants to rein this in, and he wants pay go. And, and he says, in two years from now, we're going to you know, cut way back. We'll deal with 